Hello and welcome to jobskillshare.org. We're going to start our second phase of virtualization and this is going to be part one on a different type of uh, virtualization system and we're going to call it VMware environment. Now VMware is something that is known in the community and uh, IT community. A lot of people use VMware or Hyper-V. Now of course there are other people that do use Hyper-V. So both are good. Both are going to give you some really good standards standing in the interview and if you feel like you know you you are just a fresher you're just getting into IT and if, if you start talking about this stuff like VMware Hyper-V you have done some labs on these things trust me you are going to be way 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 more better than a person who just go out with a certification uh, a piece of paper so why it is important look at this all these jobs right here you know if you do like a little smart uh, search term I like to do this stuff because then I, that's how I learn about my titles around me I know what they're looking for I'll, I, I will take out like 20 titles around my area and then I'll look for these things. What are they looking for? So if you look at these jobs, most of these help desk jobs are going to put something like virtual environment. Do you know, can you work on a VM? Can you work on a, a VMware v, a ESXi or can you work on vCenter? Now, we're not going to go too much detail in that. Like Again, this is not a virtual system administrator training. This is for help desk. So you just need to know the basic level of understanding and how to manage virtual machines, even if it's just a hypervisor. So this is what we are going to discuss in this lecture. And if you're new, Go to Jobs Could Share, type Jobs Could Share, go to Jobs Could Share English, click on playlist and click on virtualization training for entry level help desk. This is where we have covered our first three videos on Hyper-V. We have covered that. We're not going to cover any more virtualization platform. These two are enough for help desk to get their, uh, you know, uh, you know, feet in there and then talk about this and, and impress other people. This is enough for people. So this is where we are also implementing this in our course, which is our new course that we're building for our Plus and Premium members right now. And we're always changing this because we are we want to give them a perfect uh, a self-paced course where people can, even after our live training, we point people over here just for that revision because live training is a pretty big training. And after that, we want them to come and do revision in a smaller video. So that kind of like, you know, sink in pretty nicely. So this is going to be the fourth video in virtual training for entry-level help desk and also in our playlist this is going to be the fourth video over here and it's going to be about VMware so we can cover things like this hey do you know about VMware can you create a virtual machine on VMware can you take a snapshot in VMware tell me something about vSphere so that is where you're going to be talking after this video so let's get started let's get to the server let's get to the lab and let's get the hardware ready first and now again just a reminder, we do give these type of servers in our community portal. So if you go to the community portal, you see right here, it says lab space and servers. So if you come over here, these are, this is where we give you the access to all of these servers. Some of them, some of them on our data centers and we can do this kind of stuff. This is why jobscreenshare.org is unique because we do these type of things. So keep that in mind. Yes, you can, you can uh, get the server from us and do all the training from our platform. Uh, for to remind it to the premium members and plus member this is not included you have to buy this access separately this is not a part of membership thank you all right so first thing we need to download the ISO just like we did it for the server for Windows 2012 server we are going to be installing ISO for VMware so now this is where if you really want to become an IT professional you need to wear a patient hat and also a searching hat because these two are going to be very important for you if you are going to follow my steps now i'm sure you're not going to be buying exactly the same hardware that i have exactly the same ram or hard disk and so this is where everybody needs to wear these two hats and become an it professional so be uh, patient with this stuff because this that is where you're te you're getting tested if you really want to become an IT professional then now in the video I cut so many things uh, to not show my my time that I take off to go ahead and let me just take a drink because this is taking too much time of course I'm not teaching this stuff right it's gonna get too boring so that is where you need to mentally understand that there's a lot behind this stuff okay so here's what you need to do the first thing you need to is download the vmware 6.7 iso from vmware site so first thing you need to register with the vmware website so when you see this download vmware vsphere 
hypervisor you see they, they call it hypervisor because it's direct hypervisor you install it there's nothing in it then everything will be done from the web browser yes you do few things uh, from the the console and the GUI that they provide you but that's very limited okay just networking stuff host name stuff like that and also the preparation in the beginning which I'm going to show in a second so I log in, I put my password, and then I downloaded the trial version because that's that's the one that you wouldn't need. For 60 days, they're going to give you uh, 60 days trial version, and then you can install that. As you can see, select a version. Which one? U3, U2, U1. So I already have U1, which I know some of my servers are working, so we're going to try it. And if that doesn't work, of course, we're going to move up then. But this is where you need to do your search that you need to look for. Does this... 6.7 version uh, support your server like for example our AMD servers that I showed my last video that is not compatible with even 6.5 I have to actually look for some customized version online somebody did it thank you to them and I installed it on or, or be, because of that so there's a lot involved in it you really need to know if these companies are supporting the processors that you are going to buy it is very important for you to invest before you invest your money to look into these things please or else you're going to waste your money and that's going to give you a lot of headache and this is where we prefer our members to just buy directly from us if you really want to become an it professional you if you want to become something more than that then yeah if you think that you have a pretty nice goal in front of you and then you want to do everything by yourself and you want to build your own lab then definitely try it because that's also a good way to do it so two ways you want to get in the easy way we priority that you want to get in you want to get your hands dirty and it's okay for you to get that stress going that's fine with you but you got to do your own research okay so here you i have already downloaded the iso we are going to use the same uh, uh tool that i'm not going to share again this is rufus we call it rufus so go ahead go ahead and go to internet i did it this in part one download it and open it so once I open it, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my USB, which I already did. And now I'm going to basically go ahead and select and look for my, uh, my ISO. Now, just a small warning that you see that in front of you, this is act the actual VMware ESXi installed on a real server, PowerEdge R710. And basically the processor is 2.4. Uh, and this is right here CPU is e5645 so you really need to make sure that your processors are compatible with the versions because if it's not com compatible with 6.7 then you should try 6.5 if it's not 6.5 then you should go down but I don't know how down can you go with VMware you want to be on the latest to do these things so maybe just get a small new machine uh, and then try on that if you really want to if not then of course we're giving this uh, access to you from our lab so so this is the first screen that you will get you're gonna click enter and then you will click F11 so in a virtual environment I have to actually press the key like that but in real environment you just click F11 on your keyboard and that should be good to go and after that it sees right there it it uh, requires a hard disk I'm sure you'll be using a pretty large hard disk for VMware and I'm gonna click enter US and the password and that's it after this we're just gonna click enter again and F11 one more time And this will start installing the operating system on this server. Again, this is a hypervisor directly controlling your CPU, memory, and things like that. Just like what you see here. Consider this. This is a real hardware, real VMware on top of that hardware. This is just a virtual, a nested environment. So you can create... ESXi inside ESXi which is not supported by the way you need to have a pretty nice hardware for this type of stuff but um, yeah you can do this it's pretty powerful so once this is done you can just click enter and it will reboot and after rebooting 
what will happen you are going to get to uh, the option where you will see the IP address and then from that IP address you can just plug it into the web browser inside your network and then you will see uh, that uh, the login page for VMware which you are seeing on the back right there this is exactly what you will see after logging in but I'm going to show you how it looks in the console sorry on the on the just by restarting this machine like does do you have any menu or things like that you you will not see any menu just like a, a windows operating system you're not going to get a a full-blown operating system it's just a few things that is going to provide and that's it this is just for troubleshooting purpose you will need you will be needing that access uh, as an administrator so or help this if somebody asks you hey uh, our vmware is stuck can you tell me where is it stuck I'm doing an update can you tell me what is on the screen and then you can get into this stuff by telling them okay this is what I see and then they okay do this uh, hit F11 or hit do, do this to cancel this part or something like that or maybe they'll say can you go to F2 and change the name of this VMware or change the IP address of this VMware so this is why you're gonna need the backend and information and how to access to this info uh, this stuff yeah uh, this is why you need to learn about this so right now we're almost done and it's gonna get an IP address so there you go you got the IP address right there 192.168.10.251 and uh, if I type that IP address, what will happen? I'm just going to get a fresh VMware just like this one. But of course, this one has a lot of things in there. And this is the one that I just installed right here. And I can just shut it down. Now I don't need it. You see how quickly you can train th people inside the VMware or virtualized environment. That is the power of IT now. And to be honest, this makes a, a big sense to a lot of people that how to how to train now with this stuff you see we did our training few days ago and we needed one two three four five six seven eight we needed about like I said 20 machines from this machine we got eight from other one we got eight or something like that and we just spin it that's it done we, we have like this much information this much resources for people now imagine was this possible back in the days of course you need to provide them a lab now here you don't need to do that you can just set a few things online and just give people access and they're good to go so this is the part that we wanted to discuss next we're going to come here and say okay how do you install these operating system that you're seeing right here how do you install that how do you remove it how do you take a snapshot how do you take a copy of this machine so that's what we're going to discuss in part two thank you